my little yarnivores and spiderettes, Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I am delighted to show you a tutorial for the waffle stitch hat. Yes! And it looks complicated, but actually, once you get the hang of it, it's really quite simple. What it really amounts to is double crochets, front post double crochets, and back post double crochets. But the pattern itself, really quite simple. Now, I have seen other variations of the waffle hat. However, most of the time, it's flat at the top, at the crown. It's flat, and then the waffle stitch pattern starts roughly about here when you're not increasing anymore. But I did manage to figure, finagle, and fiddle my way into having the waffle texture and the ribbing at the very, very top. So very happy that I can show you that. And it is really quite simple. And for this particular piece, I used, this is Red Heart Super Saver Ombre. And no, not sponsored, but you know me, I like to let you know what it is that I'm using. Uh, so this was the colorway of Violet. Now, what's really cool is that with the, the skeins of this particular yarn, you can make two hats per skein. So you get a lot of mileage. And also, here's the other one that I made with the same skein. Because of the color changing of the ombre, you know, you have two pretty different looking hats, but they're both pretty spifferific. All right, so <clears throat> you are going to need two sized crochet hooks for this piece because I found that when you get down to the brim, if you use a size smaller, it fits just a little bit better. And this is for an adult sized hat, by the way. Now, so for the main body of the piece, you're going to use a size I, 5.5 millimeter hook. And then when you reach the brim, I used, focus, thank you, uh, a size H, 5 millimeter hook. Now, that's based on this being a weight of four, worsted weight yarn. And just to give you the, the specs, if you will. Yeah, it is, by the way, 482 yards, and it is a medium weight of four, and the recommended hook size is an I. So that being said, you could use technically any worsted weight. However, I felt that the ombre really lent itself to this pattern. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, round one. Okay, now I'm going to be using Red Heart Ombre again for this piece. This one is a gray ombre. It is in the colorway of anthracite, just so that you know. And so we're going to start with our slip knot and a chaining of four. Now you can do the magic loop method if you're, you know, partial to that. Me, I like this method a little bit better. I'm going to chain up four. One, two, three, four, and then slip stitch into the first chain to create a ring, like so. And then chain up two, and then into the center ring, 12 double crochets. The chaining of two, it's not going to count. It's just going to give us the height that we need. Uh, some people, they will chain up three and count that as their first double. For this particular piece, I find that this works a little bit better. So chain up two and then 12 double crochets into the center ring. So I've got one and two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 
12. All right. So just want to double count. You know me. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Perfect. I always like to double count. Now, if you want a smaller hat or a bigger hat, this is where you would do your fiddling and finagling as far as the initial number, and then you would just follow suit from here on in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it at 12 and going to do a slip stitch into our first double crochet, skipping this chaining of two, going into my double crochet and do a slip stitch. Okie dokie. So that is the end of round one. Now, when I said that this is for an adult sized hat, uh, ultimately the number of stitches all the way around, it's going to be 72 stitches. So if you want a slightly bigger hat, just do another double crochet or two, or if you want a smaller hat, maybe go down to 10 double crochets initially. Matter of, you know, finagling, tweaking, figuring, you know, but for, you know, a regular adult sized hat, you know, fits me just great. Um, I would say go with 12. All right, so let's press on. All right, so for round two, we're going to start increasing. But before we do that, we need to chain up two to get the height. And then keep in mind, this right here is our chain two. We want to go around the post of our first double crochet. We're going to do a front post. So I'm going to go around the actual post. We're not going into the stitch. We're going around the post and do a front post double crochet. Now to do the increasing, we're going to do a double crochet in between where we just did our front post and the next post. So just going in between the stitches. And that is how we're going to increase. So it's front post, then a stitch in between. So front post, and then a stitch in between the posts, and then a front post, stitch in between the posts, front post, and in between. And so at the end of the round, it's going to be a total of 24 stitches total. We're basically doubling the initial 12. Just a couple more to go. If my hook doesn't get caught. There we go. There we go. And I will say that I absolutely love the texture of this hat and also that it is gender neutral. So it's good for anybody. Okay. And then almost to the beginning. Okay, almost there, and then in between, and then around the post, don't forget that last in between one, and double count. All right, so again, ignore this chaining of two, so we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. 22 and 24. Perfect. Okay, so now just need to slip stitch into the top of the front post double crochet that we did. 
like so. And that is the end of round two. So we're already going to get a bit of a texture already. Alrighty. So onwards and upwards. All right, round three, we're going to increase again. First off, going to chain up two, one and two, and then front post, double crochet around the front post. Like so. Now the double crochet that we just created, that's where we're going to do our increase for round three. So into that double crochet, do two double crochets for every regular double crochet, like so. And then front, uh, front post, excuse me, front post around the front post. And then two double crochets within the double crochet. And then front post around the front post. And two double crochets into the double crochet. Front post around the front post. And two doubles into the double. like so. So keep doing this all the way around and be sure that when you're approaching the end, you're going to do a front post in the front post and then two doubles into the double and not go into this chaining of two. Okay. And then when you've done your two doubles into the double crochet, slip stitch into the top of the front post double crochet stitch, and that will be the end of round three. So I'm going to do the rest off camera and I'll meet back up with you. Alrighty. All right, for round four, things are going to get a little different, but we can do this. So at the end of round three, yes, you should have your front posts separated by two regular doubles all the way around. I think it looks pretty cool as is, but no, we got we got to keep going. All right, so we are going to do more increasing. This time it's going to be a little bit different. Plus, we're going to introduce the back post double crochet on this particular round. So to start, chain up two. And then around the front post, we need two front post double crochet stitches. And you want to go a little bit loose so that they'll be easier to go into on the next round. So we've got two front posts around that first one. I'm going to do that again for you because, yeah, it's a little bit weird, but it works. That's the important thing. So after chaining up two, going around that front post two times, around that same post. All right, so we've got our two front posts. Now, the two regular double crochet stitches that we have in between, we need to do back post stitches for those. So going around the back and capturing just the post, like so. Gonna pull your yarn through, through, and through. And that's gonna create the ridge for the waffle texture. All right, so we do back post again with the next. And yes, the, the back posts can be a little bit more fiddly than the front posts, but with practice, it will happen. All right, so we've got our two back posts. Now we've reached another front post, so we need that increase. So two front posts on each front post There we go. And then two back posts. So back post. Back post. And then two front posts. And 
and then the next two doubles are back posts. And then on the next front post, two on the same post. And then the next two double crochets are back post. So just keep doing this all the way around. Be sure to increase your front posts and back post your regular doubles. See, it's already creating that waffle ridge. All right, so keep going all the way around. And then when you reach this point, our last front post, be sure to do two front posts in this post and then do a back post and then a back post and then slip stitch to the top of the first back post, that one right there. Again, ignore the chaining of two and I will meet back up with you when I finish this off camera and we shall continue. Alrighty. All right, round five. Okay, so at this point, you should have two front posts separated by two back posts. And so this next round is gonna be a little bit easier. So going to chain up two and we're going to front post around the front post and then increase by doing a double crochet in between the two front posts that we just made. So just a regular double crochet in between those front posts and then another front post. All right, then the two back post double crochets, just do regular double crochets into those stitches. So just two regular doubles. Okay, and then front post, the front post, double crochet in between the front posts, and then front post, the front post. And that's how we're increasing for this round. So double crochet. And another double. Front post around the front post. Double in between the front posts. And then front post around the front post. Regular double. Regular double. Get your yarn untangled. <laughs> and you're always doing front posts around the front posts. It's the ones in between that can be a little bit fiddly. All right, so I did my front post, one in between and then another front post. And then two regulars. All right, so keep doing this in the same fashion all the way around. So basically it's gonna be two front posts with a double in the middle, two regular doubles, front post, regular front post. And you're gonna do that all the way around until you reach the beginning where you're going to do your front post, double in the middle, front post, and then two regular doubles, and then slip stitch into the top of this first front post. And that'll be the end of round five. So I'll meet back up with you when we're ready to continue. Alrighty. All right, round six. Now this one, is going to be the last of our increase rounds. And I love this squishy texture. And I hope you guys do too. Oh, I love it. All right. So this one, it's, yes, it's gonna be a little bit tricky, but I promise you after this, it's easy street. 
Okay, so I'm going to chain up two. And then into the front post where we're going to do another front post because we always do front posts around the front posts. Okay, now we need to do some increasing. This is going to be a little bit weird, but around the center double crochet that we made previously, we need to do two back posts around that center one. So yes, it's a little bit awkward, but again, it works. Now, the reason why we're doing that is because every two rounds, we need our back post double crochet stitches to create the waffle. That's the reason why. So, so around this double crochet, I'm going to go around the back and we're going to do our back post double crochet. And then we need to do another one. So what I do is I go in between here and go down and around that same post like so. And again, you want to be a little bit loose so that it's easier to work on those stitches later. So we've got our two back post double crochets into that same stitch. All right. And then front post, the front post for consistency. So I got these two raised front posts. And then these next two are going to be just regular back post double crochets. So I got one and two. And then front post, the front post. And then we've got this lonely little guy. He needs a friend. So I'm going to do two back post double crochets around this post. So that's one. And two. Now, yes, it does take a little bit of practice, but just be patient. Remember to breathe. You know, breathing is good. And do the front post around the front post. And then two back post doubles. Yes, remember, oxygen is your friend. Shake hands with oxygen. You know, it's, it's a good thing. You know, but practice. Practice, practice, practice. Can't stress that enough. All right, and then do another front post. And then little guy needs a friend, so two back post double crochets around that stitch. And then, like I said, after this round, every following round, it's really going to be quite easy. Trust me. All right, so then another front post. And then two regular back post. So it's back. And then back. And then another front post. Okay, and then give this little guy a friend. So back post. And back post around the same post, and then another front post, and then two back posts. All right, so I'm going to do the rest of this round off camera, but basically, yeah, what it amounts to is Keep your front posts front posts. That remains consistent throughout. But the one double crochet in the middle, well, you need two back posts on that one and then just two regular back posts. And so it'll keep consistent. So we've got our ridge here and our ridge here. It's every other row. We need to do those back posts to keep those ridges and the waffle staying fresh and crispy. <laughs> All right, so just keep on going in the same fashion. And when you've reached the beginning, it's going to be front post, two back posts around that one little guy, 
front post, back post, back post, and then again, skipping over this chaining of two, do a slip stitch into the top of this first front post that we made. All right, so I'm going to do the rest off camera and I will meet back up with you when we're ready for the next round. All righty. Welcome to Easy Street. This is round seven. All right, this is where the repeat really gets going and it's a breeze from here. All right, so I'm gonna start by chaining up two as per usual, and then going to do a front post around our first front post, like so, and then two regular double crochets and then front post around the front post and then two regular double crochets this is my favorite round because it's like you know yep yep the hard work is over and these rounds are awesome all right so just front post two doubles front post and then two doubles. And front post. And two doubles. And so on and so forth for the rest of the round. It's really that easy for round seven. All right. So. Keep on keeping on doing your front post two doubles, front post two doubles, front post two doubles, all the way around, okay? And then, you know, be sure that when you come full circle, be sure that you, you do your front post two doubles, front post two doubles, skipping this little chain two, and then do a slip stitch into the top of that first front post, okay? And then, I will meet back up with you for the next round of the repeat uh, where we're going to do our front posts and back posts. All right. All right. I'll meet back up with you when I'm done with this round. Just two doubles, front post, two doubles, front post, two doubles, front post. You got this. All right. I'll meet back up with you. All right. Round eight. Okay. So in our last round, we were doing doubles. Well, now we need to do back post doubles where the doubles were. So we're going to start in our usual fashion by chaining up two and then doing a front post around the front post, just as we have been. And then for each of these regular two doubles that we encounter, we're going to do back post doubles. So back post, back post, and then front post around the front post. There we go. And then two back post. And then another front post. And that's going to continue on our lovely waffle texture. It's just two back posts, then a front post, all the way around. Oops. Damn it. There we go. And then another front post. And then two more back posts. And then another front post. See? All right, so keep doing this all the way around and then be sure to do your front post where the front post is and then two back post and then slip stitch into the top of this first front post. So in order to keep going, 
just keep doing those two rows over and over and over. Uh, so the next round would be doing a front post in the front post and then two doubles into where we did our back post stitches, then front post, double, double, front post, double, double, front post, double, double. I sound like I'm saying rubble, rubble. <laughs> I'm the hamburger. Um, so just keep doing that, those two rows back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, um, and until your hat is as big as you want it to be. And I'm gonna show you what you can do as far as sort of cleaning up the brim a little bit. All right, so I will meet back up with you. All righty. All right, so I'm gonna show you as far as how big I made my hat, all right, is what I did was I count these ridges. So kind of kind of tricky to see, but so you have our initial V where we started, right? So we have our V and then I counted, this is our first ridge that we did within the V. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. So what I did was after I made the ridge with my two back post double crochets, okay, I didn't then proceed to do another round where it's just doubles in the doubles. No, what I did was I ended uh, after, like I said, seven of those ridges. So you see, we have our, our V here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. So after seven ridges, I stopped and I switched hooks, the smaller size hook, and then I continued on with cleaning up the edge just a little bit for the sake of a brim. Now, obviously, this is a very different colorway. It's a bit blinding on camera, I, I gather, but it's a really nice colorway. This, of course, also is the Red Heart Ombre, and this is Sea Coral. You know, I, I went a little bit crazy at Walmart when I picked up these colors, and I just, I went for it. So swapping out hooks to the smaller size hook, and so instead of an I, I'm using a size H, all I did, quite frankly, is I did two rounds of half double crochet stitches all the way around. And that's all I did, really, just to sort of clean it up a little. So to do that, you would chain up one. And this is where that last round ended. So chain up one and then into that same stitch, do a half double. Now, so after chaining up one, you yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull through all three. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through all three, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through all three, and so, I mean, that's really all I did. Now, there are variations as to what you can do uh, for a different edging, brim, what have you, for your hat. Really, you can do whatever it is that you like, you know. And I was tempted, actually, to do a one-by-one -one ribbing with double crochets using front post and back post double crochet stitches. I was tempted. However, this is a repeat of three, so it's not divisible by two. So if you were to do a one by one ribbing, you would have inevitably two back posts or two front posts right next to each other. Granted, it would be in the back. You probably wouldn't notice it, but I didn't care for that much. So basically you would do your half doubles all the way around until you would do, you know, a half post in here. Sorry, not a half post, a half double in here, in here, in here. Then slip stitch to the top of your first half double, chain up one, 
and then do half doubles all the way around again. Just be careful not to confuse this chain as a half double. Otherwise, you're going to end up increasing stitches. Another variation that you could do on the following round would be to do your half doubles in the back loop only. That would create a slight ridge. You know, there are options by all means. Or you could do a back post half double and it would make uh, this stick out as if it's sort of like a, a, a chain knitted look. There are variations. All right. So listen, I really hope that you'd enjoy this tutorial because I had a blast showing you. And it is a nice and warm and squooshy hat. And I had a lot of fun making these. And I hope that you give it a try as well because the cold season is approaching. It's with us and it won't be denied. So you gotta stay warm and toasty. So if you like this video, please give a little thumbs up button down below because I appreciate your appreciation as always. And, uh, you know, comment, hit subscribe for more because I do try to post as often as I can, whether it's crocheting or knitting or audiobook narrations or my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games. I do video game playthroughs and commentary. It's a lot of fun. Would like to see you there. And also, please do check out my Etsy store. Going to be putting up some of these hats momentarily uh, as soon as I can. And uh, listen, until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.